G'day, I'm Ben White. And I'm Josh Jamelli. And uh, Ben, it's looking like a bit of a wet harvest this year. Yeah, mate, it's started to get underway already and uh, we're already hearing some horror stories of people getting machines bogged. Uh, and unfortunately that pre presents us with a few challenges. These things aren't terribly easy to get out of the mud. That's right, Ben, and also not particularly safe. So uh, we're going to go through a whole range of things uh, today in terms of uh, recovering a bogged harvester. But anyone will tell you the best way to uh, get out of a bog is not get in one in the first place. Absolutely. So if we can avoid that, that's uh, uh, the best way we can go. But look, there's a few things we can probably do to be as prepared as possible. Hmm. Um, one of those is just setting your tyre inflation pressure to the lowest of the range that, uh, that the manufacturer recommends. Yep. Uh, Josh, if you do get in a bog, obviously you can drop those pressures right down to extract yourself. Absolutely, get a bit more traction that way, as long as you put them back up again later on, especially if you're on the road. Absolutely. And look, for a machine like this with jewels on it, it might be an option to actually turn one yep. of those jewels around the other way so That's that right. you've got traction in the reverse yeah. as well. Yep, absolutely. And look, you know, if you are in a uh, boggy situation, uh, you probably do need to think about lightening the load because, look, let's face it, the best way you can recover a bog machine is self-recovery before resorting to uh, pulling it out with another machine. So, Ben, what are some of the things we can do in terms of lightening the load? Well, obviously, if we've got grain in the, in the tank, that's something we need to get rid yep. of. So, um, in, that might actually mean that we need to trick the machine a little bit into thinking that the auger, the outload auger is, is actually out of the saddle. Uh, so we not, yep. might need to pop it out or adjust the sensor there. Yep. Uh, of course, if you are going to do that, make sure it's tethered as well yep. so it doesn't swing all the way out. Yeah, that's just so that you can unload directly behind the machine? That's right, because yep. you're going to want to try and back up into the machine and outload yep. as much of that okay. grain as you can and lighten the load. Yep. And look, another thing uh, I suppose that you can do is actually remove the front. So you can drop the front down uh, you know, you're losing a couple of tonnes there, but it's also the leverage effect that that has over the front axle. So you take the front off, back the machine out, recover the front later on. You know, if we then start thinking about, uh, you know, where recovery points are on machines, mm. this thing's actually a pretty useful resource and, and everyone should be just reading uh, the, the user manual, obviously, before harvest. Yep. If you haven't done so already, there's a wealth of information on machine setup in there and also recovery yep. if you're in, uh, in a bog. Yeah, and I suppose a bit of advice is before you actually uh, get stuck in the harvest, crawl under the machine in the shed, have a look at your recovery points, if there are any, work out what you're going to do if the time comes, because let's face it, it's not much fun crawling down there in the mud, trying to work out how you're gonna strap the machine up. So we're gonna run through a few of those ideas and, and uh, give you a few examples as to where you can hook up the machine and how you can hook it up safely to get yourself out of a sticky situation. And of course, I should mention that if you are bogged, one of the things we need to do, unfortunately, Josh, is have a chat to our old mate Doug here. Yep. Uh, Doug's going to uh, clear a bit of mud around the, the wheels and, and, and again lighten the load and, and make sure that that recovery yep. is as easy as possible. Yep. Let's get stuck into it. When extracting a bogged harvester using another machine, there are some significant forces involved. We need to be mindful of these. Might be tempting to head for the biggest chain that you've got in the shed, but one word of advice, don't go for a chain. Chains generally don't have a really high load rating and they have quite a lot of mass so that in the event that something breaks, there's a lot of momentum behind a chain and a lot of people have been killed over the years by snapping chains when trying to recover bogged machinery. Instead, what we're gonna go for is synthetic gear. So this is a nylon recovery strap and it's rated to 60 tonnes. So this is what we need, but it's not as simple as just hooking this onto the back of the machine. Let's have a look at some of the gear that we need. If you've climbed under your machine and looked at your recovery points and actually found that there's nothing on this axle that, we'll, that you can hook onto, we need to use some pretty specific equipment. Now what we've got here are axle bridle straps. The only safe way to do this is to hook around the front axle and tow backwards. If you hook onto the rear axle of the machine and try and pull it out that way, you're going to do some damage to the machine. It is simply not designed to take that kind of force. So these straps, if you don't have anything to hook onto, these wrap around the axles, just on the inside of the wheels on either side. They are then joined by this bridle strap here. Now, in order to join them, we need to use D-shackle, okay? These need to be rated to match the straps. Now, in an ideal world, we wouldn't use D-shackles at all because they can uh, become projectiles in case something breaks. But if we use a D-shackle on the bridle strap, 
If something breaks, one of these axle straps or the bridle strap itself, the D shackles are still going to be attached to the machine and not become a projectile. Now the bridle strap, which hooks our axle straps together, so it's going from one side of the machine to the other, is passed through our recovery strap. So it's not attached using a D shackle, it's simply passed through. What this means is that there's no D shackle attached to this end of the recovery strap itself. So nothing to become a projectile in case, say, this gives way. Now, the choice of a recovery strap is a pretty important consideration. Generally, you're gonna be using something like this, a nylon recovery strap. This strap has a little bit of elasticity to it, but it's important that we don't use it like a four wheel drive snatch strap and we don't wind it right up. Other options are like a black snake uh, Kevlar filled strap. Now that strap has no elasticity to it whatsoever and it must be used by taking up the slack and then doing a direct pull. And look, the, st the strap has a uh, load rating to it. This one is um, 60 tonnes. It's important that the load rating of the strap is actually matched to the power of the vehicle used to pull out the harvester. So we're gonna simulate what might happen in a boggy paddock. Now clearly we're not in a body, boggy paddock here, but we're gonna give you a demonstration of what might happen. Now just to reiterate and, and reinforce the importance of pulling this machine, we're gonna pull it out backwards, but from the front axle. Now don't try pulling machines out from the rear axle, and, unless you've got a dedicated tow point there or recovery point, most machines don't have that. So what we tend to do is make a, a bridle up that attaches to the front axle and we recover the vehicle pulling it out backwards from the rear. And of course, as we said before, you may need to kick that um, outload auger out of the saddle up there and empty it into the chaser bin to try and take out as much weight as possible uh, before we get into this next step. So let's go and have a look. So the next step is to attach our bridle to these axle straps. And in this scenario, we're gonna to have to use a D shackle because uh, there are there's nowhere else to attach it. So we're gonna put that through. Now remember, that D shackle has to be rated accordingly uh, to match the, the strap uh, capacities. I'm going to bring that through there and then also attach our bridle strap. So that's ready to go. And then once we've got that in place, we'll do the same on the other side. Um, but first we've got to just thread this uh, bridle through the recovery strap. Right so before we attach the other end of the bridle to the other axle strap, we've just got to take it through our recovery strap first, so through the loop on the end. Take that through, get it in position, and now we're going to attach the other axle strap. All right, so we've now attached our other axle strap onto this other side of the front axle. Uh, all we need to do now is attach our bridle strap to that. Uh, we've threaded it through, uh, through the recovery strap, so we're... Once we do this, we're ready to go. And of course, remember those pins don't need to be tight. They just need to be firmly in place. Also check drive shaft clearance when that strap's in its working position. Okay, there is one other attachment we need to make and that's the tether straps on the recovery strap. So the tether strap is there to absorb the recoil should the, the uh, recovery strap snap. Uh, and just dis dissipate some of the energy out of it. So that's just got to be attached somewhere uh, reasonably firmly um, just so that it uh, is in place and always make sure that when that recovery strap is in its working position and, and under its working load that there's still pl plenty of uh, slack in that uh, tether strap. Look, if your recovery strap doesn't have those extra tether points, then one thing you might consider is just maybe putting an old car tyre over the strap uh, just to catch the strap if it does snap, catch the recoil of the strap. Uh, another option might be uh, some sandbags uh, placed over the top of the strap. Just something that can catch the strap if it does break. Okay, so get all the twists out of the strap and then the next thing to do is hook it to the drawbar. Don't forget the uh, pin for the bottom of the drawbar. And also, if you do have a tether strap fitted, then attach that as well. Okay, so just to recap, we've got our axle straps around our axle. They're attached to the bridle strap with a big D shackle. The bridle strap has been passed through our recovery strap. 
and a recovery strap is attached to the back of the vehicle doing the extraction. Now it can be pretty hard when you're positioning these straps to actually work out if they're going to come into contact with anything under the machine that might be damaged when you take up the strain. So look, if you're in doubt, put a bit of strain on the strap, hop out and have a look. You know, especially at the rear of the machine, if you've got a chopper that might need to be raised up out of the way, if you've got a weed seed destruction unit, they hang down pretty low and they can actually also come into contact with the strap. So just a few things that need to be checked before you do put the power on. Now, if you're attempting to recover a harvester that's got a weed seed mill attached to the back of it, remember that they hang quite low and they are prone to damage. Always check the relative position of the recovery strap and the mill and make sure they don't come in contact. But also remember that that geometry might change a little bit as the machine comes up out of the bog. You can buy yourself a little bit of insurance by fixing a sheet of ply in between the mill and the recovery strap uh, just to try and spread the load a little bit. Try and extend that back to the rear axle so that it does lift up. And also remember that the length of the recovery strap can also change the geometry and have influence on the upward forces that the strap will have under tension. Now sometimes the ground conditions don't allow you to get close enough to the vehicle you're trying to extract with just one strap. So if you've got a couple of straps, we need to join them. So for God's sake, don't use a D-shackle because if something breaks, that D-shackle becomes a projectile and it can cause serious injury or death. Also, straps are not meant to be looped over each other to join them together. Not only is a strap not designed for that kind of use, but those two strap eyes can tighten against each other and you'll never get them undone. Now, what you need is one of these. This is a soft shackle. This is what you use to replace a D-shackle. And not just for joining straps together, but in any situation where a D-shackle might become a dangerous projectile. You simply pull out this eye, you pass it through the two straps you want to join, place it over this large knot, and you slide it back up. Now this is a smaller one than what you'd probably use for extracting a harvester, but the same principles apply. That's what you use because there's very little weight in that, it's a much safer option. Okay, we've got the machines hooked up. Now, the next thing to do before we start pulling the machine out, get all your bystanders, all your observers, even your dog, keep them out the way, well out of the way, because look, if anything does give way, it can potentially be a dangerous situation. Okay, the simplest way to pull this out is with the machine in neutral and the park brake off. Of course, sometimes we need a little bit of extra assistance, so we're gonna need a driver in the seat operating the machine in reverse. So look, make sure you communicate well, use your radio uh, to make sure that you coordinate uh, your operation with the person in the towing vehicle. This is not like snatching a vehicle off the beach like you might have done with a four wheel drive. What we're gonna do is do it in stages, do it nice and steadily. We're gonna stay in communication with the person in the cab. We're gonna make sure that we step up the power as we need it. We're not just gonna have a rush of blood to the head. We're gonna go nice and steady. About two to five k's an hour, yeah. sort of where we need to be at. That's right. That's right. You know, depending on your strap manufacturer, they're always going to have a recommendation for you. Now you've seen us uh, underneath the machine putting these straps in place in an ideal situation. In a boggy situation, Ben, you're probably hardly even going to have access to the underneath of the machine. There's just not going to be any room. That's the reality. It's going to be it's going to be boggy. It's going to be muddy. You're going to be stuck in in under the mud. And one option might be to actually pre-fit some straps. So, you know, whether the straps are there, if you're in conditions like canola, for example, you might want to use cable instead of straps. Yeah, so. yeah, because, you know, that could actually damage a strap that's been left in place. I mean, if, if we're going to use nylon axle straps, we probably need to think about uh, some cautionary measures to stop those axle straps being damaged by the axle itself because some of the, the edges of the, the axle can be pretty sharp. That's right, there's some cleats on the axle that can be quite sharp and, and maybe just going around and, and tidying those up, taking the sharp edge off those might yep. be an option. Yep. Or of course, we could use an old bit of carpet, yep. some rubber just to, to probably buffer the axle straps. While they do have a protective sheath on them, yeah. uh, maybe good just to try and protect them as best we can. Yep, absolutely. So Ben, been a long day but that kind of covers most of it look remember every situation is going to be different so what we've shown you today is best practice but machines are different and situations are different so i think the important thing is always remember the forces you're dealing with are considerable and the chance of injury is quite great so just use your brain and don't take any risks so take it easy guys during harvest use what we've given you today as tools to be as safe as possible and have a safe harvest